Our next question comes to us from Susan. Yep. She says, some people are naturally not that emotional. <laughs> so what exactly does it mean to work through your emotional injuries, feel the full extent of emotions and release them? Mm -hmm. AJ talks about crying a lot or beating the hell out of a bean bag if the injury is anger or rage. But what if some people just aren't emotional like that? How do you release when you're not that emotional? <laughs> Honestly, Susan, you don't understand the soul yet. <laughs> right? The reality is, is God designed the soul to be emotional. Yeah. So everyone is emotional. Yeah. If you are shut down to the extent that Susan is, yeah. then you will feel like you're not as emotional as other people. Mm -hmm. Like I can remember during my life that once I hit, I think it was like 10 or 12, I never cried from then until when I started first processing emotions when I was 33. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, you can shut down your emotions in complete denial if you want to, mm -hmm. but, but don't claim that it's just because you're not emotional. Yeah. Because you are. God designed you to be emotional. There's no, this belief that some people are more emotional than others is not true. Mm. It's not true. God designed your soul to, be, to have emotions flowing through it 100% of the time, all the time. That's how God designed your soul. All of us have various ways which that expresses itself in the sense that some of us have been shut down quite intensely as children and so therefore we don't have any emotion flowing through our soul like that. Mm -hmm. And we, are, we do have to somehow open up to them again. Yep. Other people are histrionic. Yeah. They are drama queens. They use emotion as a manipulative technique to engage their addictions. And we know many people like that. Definitely. That's not the kind of emotion I'm talking about either. Because that's not really true emotion no, either, is it? not at all. It's an expression of rage or passive aggression or manipulation. Manipulation or, or... and addiction, really. Yep. It's just an addiction. Addiction. It's an addiction yep. to avoid underlying fears and underlying real emotion. Mm -hmm. but, but there are lots of people who do that. In fact, the majority of my life, whenever I've seen a person emotional, generally... They are like that. Yeah. And the average person in our seminars that flies off the handle all of a sudden and screams and yells and carries on in the middle of a seminar is like that. Yeah. They have emotions going on which are all about addictions and avoidance of their real feelings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm not talking about those emotions. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, though, is that God designed your soul to have a 100% flow of all of your emotions if you're saying to me that some people are not emotional as other people, that is completely incorrect mm -hmm. and, and completely untrue and only the result of injuries. Yeah. So, Susan, I'm sorry, but dear, but you are in denial of your emotion. That's mm -hmm. why your emotion is shut down. And any person who says, who makes these comments, who asks these kind of questions, and we have many hundreds of questions mm -hmm. <laughs> from people saying, I'm not as emotional as other people, yeah. you know, all of you are wrong. You are as emotional as other people. It's just that you've had more things happen to you that caused you to shut down your emotions. Yeah. And you need to come to terms with the fact that you, you must be pretty shut down if God designed you to be emotional. Mm. So my suggestion is, instead of telling yourself that you're not as emotional as other people, mm -hmm. you need to see that not being as emotional as other people, if, it's, if you're comparing yourself with people who are drama queens and, and, and you know, just, uh, what was the other word I used? Histrionic. Then don't, because they are not feeling their emotions either. They're just using an emotional technique of manipulation to avoid their real emotions. So don't compare yourself to those people. But if you're comparing yourself to me, as this lady is doing, mm -hmm. right, she's saying that I have, you know, cried and bashed things and whatever else to yeah. get to my emotions, and I'm not a histrionic person. No. <laughs> and for a large portion of my life, I was completely shut down to yeah. my emotions from, like I said, from the time I was 12 to the time I was 33, 20, 21 years, mm -hmm. I was completely shut down to my emotion, completely shut down. So if I can get from being completely sh shut down to my emotions to being open to my emotions and everyone else's emotions, and I'm telling you that the reason why I did that was because I became open emotionally from a state of denial, mm -hmm. then I suggest to you, Susan, that you can do the same. Yeah. Yep. 
And Susan's question, her final question was, how do you release when you're not that emotional? And the, the answer is really about well, working... Well, really what she's saying is, how do, how do you release when you're in denial? Yeah. That's the real question. Yeah. And the answer is, you can't. No. You cannot release causal emotion while you're in denial that even those emotions exist. Mm -hmm. And Susan is in denial that these emotions exist. Yeah. So, so while she's in denial that these emotions exist, she will not be able to connect to them, nor will she be able to release them. And in fact, maintaining denial that these emotions exist are, is just one method she is using in order to stay away from the painful emotions. So uh, she's using it as a method to stay away from her personal pain, yeah. telling herself that she is not like the average person and therefore not generally emotional. Mm -hmm. Is a, is a method that she's been taught to, to, to demonstrate or that she's learned herself mm -hmm. to avoid the experience of her emotions. Yeah. And she's going to need to undo that if she's ever going to get to become at one with God. Yeah. Mm. I feel a lot of compassion for people who, who uh, probably because I've been one of them, who we reach adulthood and um, <laughs> feel totally disconnected from our emotional mm. selves. Yeah, and, so. And... What I feel from Susan's question is there's a lot of judgment within her from her experience of emotion. Definitely. She feels like she doesn't, not only is she not that emotional, she doesn't want to be. No. And but see, we've got to be honest here. Yeah. There's, there's two things here, isn't there? There's do I desire to actually feel my emotions? Mm -hmm. And Susan doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right? And then the second question is, Am I using a technique to avoid emotions unwittingly? Yep. Right? And that's very different. That's, that's, like, that's what I would classify as ignorance of how important emotions are. Mm -hmm. Now, Susan's not ignorant of how important they are because she's probably listened to me for a while <laughs> and therefore knows that I've stated it over and over again. So she is actively mm -hmm. attempting to deny her emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, I have less compassion for such a person. I see. Yeah. <laughs> than a person who unwittingly or, uh, or ignorantly does not know mm -hmm. that releasing their emotions will help them. Mm -hmm. A person who's choosing to avoid their emotions, choosing to remain in denial, and choosing purposefully to tell them, and even tells themselves that they're just not as emotional as other people, yep. that's a purposeful choice to tell yourself a message that is not true. Mm. And that is a technique you're using to avoid your emotions, sure. Mm -hmm. but, but you've got to be honest about that technique. You are not going to progress towards God while you have that technique in play. Mm -hmm. You need to look at the reason why you chose to tell yourself these messages. And yes, a lot of that is related to childhood emotion. And that's yeah. where I do have compassion. Yeah. Childhood emotion, and particularly the suppression of childhood emotion by parents, and the suggestions and violence that often comes from parents to suppress childhood emotion mm -hmm. causes us to grow up and become a person who has little experience of emotion. Yeah. That's what it and, does. And judgment of emotion. And to have judgment of emotion. So we need to be careful here. Is it judgment of emotion that's Susan's problem mm -hmm. or is it denial of a truth that's Susan's problem? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I suggest to, that, that, yes, the denial of the truth is motivated partially by judgment, yeah. but mostly by her own avoidance of pain, uh -huh. mostly by her desire to deny the experience of pain, which, which everyone has emotionally in them. Yeah. Do, do you see? Yeah. So we've got to be careful that we, we, that we say, you know, what is really going on for, for individuals. Mm. Now... Judgment certainly is a problem of emotion and some people will have to go through feelings relating to how much their own emotion as a child was judged. Yeah. And certainly a person doesn't arrive in a state of denial without there being some judgment of emotion occurring in their childhood. Yeah. But the real question becomes, is that judgment unwitting or, or igno ignorance of the truth mm -hmm. or is it a purposeful desire to avoid the truth? Now, in Susan's case, it is a purposeful desire to avoid the truth. Yeah. She's been told the truth that emotions are God created them. God created you to be an emotional being. Your soul is emotional. She's been told these truths, but she doesn't want to accept them. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a purposeful choice mm -hmm. to not accept the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if you purposefully choose to not accept this truth, as many do, you will never become at one with God, yeah. ever. You are consigning yourself 
to progress in love, but only in natural love. You will never be able to receive God's love to the point of atonement while you tell yourselves these untruths. Mm -hmm. So I feel that every person who tells themselves this kind of message is telling themselves an untruth. And while you tell yourself such an untruth, you will never become at one with God. So while you may progress a bit, because you'll have to use anything other than emotional techniques to progress, you will not love, you will not come to know it, and you'll certainly not come to experience God's love. Because God's love is a very overpowering emotion, mm. which will overpower you every time you experience it. And so if you're not, you will definitely be emotional while you feel that. And if you're not, it means you're not feeling it. It means that you're in denial, you're shut down to your own emotions. So stop telling yourself messages that are not true. Mm. Stop making the choice to tell yourself. And the choice to tell yourself something after you've heard the truth, the choice to tell yourself the opposite, the lie, is a choice. Mm. And that's totally different mm. than you not doing it because of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And this is what people need to realize. Once you've heard the truth about God and the way God created the soul and the human soul itself, the, the, the decision you're going to have to make is do you have enough trust in that to believe it and take actions about it or not? Mm -hmm. Sue doesn't. Mm -hmm. Susan doesn't. Mm -hmm. Susan wants to not believe it. Mm. She wants to deny that it's a problem. She wants to deny that emotions are going to, you know, she even wants to deny that she's an emotional being. Mm -hmm. And so that is an active choice taken to completely distance herself from God's truth on the matter. And that is not taken out of judgment, no. although judgment may be involved. That's an expression of her will mm -hmm. to not feel painful emotions. Yeah, that's an important distinction you're making there. Yes. Mm. And I, I feel that uh, a lot of people, as you know, have left the path of divine truth, yep. mostly because they don't want to feel emotion. They, well, to be more frank, mostly because they don't want to feel pain. Right? And we tell them, oftentimes they come to us and ask us about where they are at emotionally. We tell them they feel pained by our response and from then on they don't want to hear the truth. That is an active choice that they've made to deny their own emotional experience and to deny the truth about how God has created their soul. While you do that, you are not going to progress towards God. Mm. You are just never going to progress. You can tell yourself that to your blue in the face. You will not progress towards God. You can, you can make, blame me for suggesting that emotion is the way towards God, but it's not my fault that emotion is the way towards God. Right? God designed it that way. God designed, God, God knows, and God designed our soul in such a way that progression towards God in love is not possible without us being emotional beings. That's, as that's we, reality. Yeah. As much as people on earth want to tell you differently, that is the reality of God's truth. Now, if Susan had said, I don't believe you, that would have been more honest. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel, Susan, what you need to have asked me said is just, AJ, I don't believe that emotions are the way to God. And I'll go, Susan, you're allowed to believe whatever you like. <laughs> However, the reality is emotions are the way to God. And you will find sometime in your future that unless you start engaging your emotions, you will never become at one with God. So I'm okay with you believing it, but as long as you believe that emotions are not the way to God and that you are somehow, you know, different to other people and, and unique and you don't have emotions, as long as you believe these particular things, you will never become at one with God. So, so try it out for a while. Try it out for the next 20 years and see how you go. See whether you become at one with God in the next 20 years using your method. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I suggest to you, you will not. Thanks. No worries. <laughs>